lesson for you, um, but I still want to take the time to go through it, all right? Um, we're going to talk about addition, subtraction, multiplication. Division is a whole other monster that we will get to. We will take a couple of days talking about division. So the first thing, bless you, is what is a polynomial? It is a shape. Oh, wow, that's a polygon. The polygon. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Nice try, though. Buddy, I'll keep those All right. So we have already talked about a type of polynomial, and that is a quadratic. Okay, quadratic has three terms. Poly means many. So a polynomial has, it can actually have one or more terms. Okay, there's no limit to how many terms it has. So we're talking about things that look like Okay, I'm not limiting how many terms can be in that polynomial. The only stipulation that you have is that all the exponents are positive whole numbers. Okay. You can have negative fractions, irrational numbers, and all that as the coefficients here, but if you're talking about exponents on the variable, these, they have to be positive whole numbers to be a polynomial, okay? All right, let's add and subtract. Y'all ready? Wow, don't get so excited. Contain yourselves, guys. Contain yourselves. All right. Addition. Sure. It's addition. And so Ben already said, is that just combine like terms? And he's absolutely right. So if we're combining like terms, I guess I need to, to define what like terms are. What does it mean to be like terms? What's the same about them? The base. The base. And exponent. Wait, does it have to have the same exponent? <laughs> yes, yes, Ben, yes, it does. It has to have the same exponent as well. I appreciate your enthusiasm, though. <laughs> All right, so um, things that are like terms would be 5x squared and negative 3x squared, right? Mm. Or... One half x to the fifth, six x to the fifth. Those are like terms, right? The base is the same. The coefficient doesn't matter. The base is the same and the exponents are the same. So how do I combine like terms? So I know what like terms are. Now tell me how you combine them. What do you combine? <laughs> but what are you, co if I asked you to add these two things, the coefficients, you're exactly right. You combine the coefficients, and I know that this seems very basic, but when we start mixing these operations, you're going to start getting mixed up, okay? Combine the coefficients, leave the base and exponent alone. So 5x squared and negative 3x squared would be... 2x. 2x squared, right? Do we all know how to do that? So we're going to take this on a little bit bigger scale. I'll give you all a second. All right, let's say I have 2x to the fifth minus 8x to the third plus 2x squared minus 5x plus... Ooh, wait, just somebody said that's a lot of numbers. Wait till we get multiplication. Six <laughs> x to the fourth minus eight x squared. Actually, let's do minus eight x cubed. Here we go. What? That's a twelve. I don't know why I started to write the exact same number I'd already written. I'll change it. So I tried to put a 1 in front. Okay. All right. 
So if I'm adding these two polynomials, the only thing I want to do is look for the like terms and combine them. So start with the biggest exponent, and standard form typically has me go from the biggest exponent down to the smallest is why I wrote them like this. But you may encounter some that the exponents are all mixed up. They're out of order. Does that matter? It you want to keep it in standard form. But it'll throw you if they give it to you and it's not in standard form to start with. So okay. does it does not mean it's in standard form if there's like a 3 exponent and like a 7 exponent? Right. If the 3 comes before the 7, that's not in standard form. So then even if it looks the same, it's still not standard form. It's right. All right. Biggest exponent is? Is there any other one to combine it with? No. no. So it's 2x to the 5th. So at this point, I would start counting down and say, okay, five was my biggest. Do I have any exponents of four? Yes. Yes. Six x to the fourth. I mark them out as I go when they start getting big like this else. I lose my place. All right, how about powers of three? There's two of them. There's an eight x, a negative eight x to the third, and a negative eight x to the third. Do they? Negative 16. They're both negative and I'm adding them. All right, powers of 2. Yeah. Yes. yes, I have a 2 and I have a 12 and that would give me 14x squared. How about powers of 1? Why do you all do your 4 like that? Yep, so it's minus 5x. Minus 10. That? That's your answer? Yeah, this one was minus 5x. That's the answer, That's the answer yes. Subtraction. Subtraction. Wait, do we have to do multiplication and division for this? We're doing addition, subtraction, multiplication. Division is a two part lesson that'll cover probably three days. Oh. Divisions when it gets. <laughs> Sticky. All right, subtraction. Now I want you to think about this for a minute because we've kind of done this with quadratics. If I have and it wasn't just no, we did it with complex numbers. I think we talked about this whenever we were subtracting. Oh, like a real number in Correct, right. Oh. Um, cube minus 5x squared. Yes, yes, you're exactly right. Plus 7x minus 3. So now what you have to understand is that I'm taking this polynomial and I'm subtracting everything here. Okay? I'm subtracting that entire second polynomial. So this is where we kind of did a same change, change everything if you're a same change change person, okay? For me, it's easier to do that when I'm talking about big polynomials like this because it's easier for me to see. Because if I do same change, change everything, then I get change, 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 ah, change. So now it becomes an addition problem again. Now, do you have to do this? No, you don't have to do it this way. You could say, what is 5x to the third minus 3x to the third? And you could find it that way. This just, I find it easier for students to do it this way. All right, let's look at our powers of three. What do you get? Two x cubed. Can y'all see that color okay? Yes, no, okay. Um, so I'm done with the cubes. How about powers of 2? 7x squared. How about x's? Negative 15. X. You with us, Ben? 1 and 3 is 4. Yes? All right. Y'all ready to move on to multiplication? A little bit harder. We have to. What time is it? 8.37. Right on time. All right. <laughs> We're still right on time. I want to be done by 9. 
All right. Multiplication. So before I show you the whole polynomial, let's talk about what happens when we multiply terms. In other words, if we multiplied 5x to the third times um, 7x to the eighth, what do you do? We know we add the exponents. What about those numbers in front? You multiply them, right? And if you want to think about it, this is really 5 times x to the third and 7 times x to the eighth. And because multiplication is what, Ben? Commutative, I can do the 5 and the 7 and get 35 x to the 11. So I add the exponents and I multiply coefficients. So it doesn't Right. No, even that's even only with addition subtraction. There should only be even numbers. The odd numbers just be like, you can like round up for the even numbers. That's like there shouldn't be coins. Be what? Yeah, what are y'all talking about yeah. right yeah. now? The <laughs> odd numbers with 11 are trash. Okay. Yeah, so let's, not start, let's start with two binomials. You are familiar with doing this. You have done it many times. Y'all call it what? Foiling. foiling. And I told you I don't like foiling because whenever we make these bigger than just two pieces, we can't just foil anymore. I prefer for you to understand that it is distributing. So this first piece must to distribute to everything in the parentheses, right? So 3x times x is? 3x. 3x squared. 3x times negative 3 is? Now I'm done with that one, right? Now I move on to the next piece. It's got to distribute through. So 5 times x is? 5x. And 5 times negative 3 is? Negative 3. Right? And then we combine like terms. But what if I then said, okay... Now multiply those two together. This is a new problem. This is a new problem. She's just creating a new problem. That's smart. Yeah, I thought we were getting that from the last one. Oh my God. Would y'all rather me go to a new page and just write a new problem? Yeah. Okay. Let's do. Oh. Well, you can multiply anything. Multiply is not hard. But yeah, I'm just kind of making them. Okay, then. We're aware of your hatred of seven. I'm not sure why, but okay. Let's start with the first term, and it is going to distribute to everything in the parentheses, okay? So, 4x squared times x squared is 4x to the fourth. 4x squared times 5x, 20x to the third. 4x squared times 2, I'm done with this one. Add the exponents. When you multiply, you add the exponents. Okay, negative 3x times x squared is? What is it? Minus 3x cubed. To the 5x. Negative 3x times 5x. Minus 15x squared. Negative 3x times 2. Am I done? No, I got a whole other term there on the end. 1. Rewrite. 1 times x squared. Plus 5x plus 2. That's not very long. Now I get to combine my like terms. Okay. Um, 4x to the fourth. How about powers of 3? I got 20 and negative 3, which would give me 17. Is that right? 
Y'all checking behind me? Mm -hmm. Powers of 2. 8 and negative 15 would be negative 7. And 1 would be negative 6. Is that what y'all got? Mm -hmm. Just x's, I've got negative 6 and positive 5, which would be negative 1x. And my little 2 on the end. Imagine, like, multiplying the first number and adding, like, the x kind of wrong and having, like, mm -hmm. Imagine this. What does that mean? That means that three times. Do not, and everybody listen, do not distribute that inside that parentheses. See that big fat minus sign in the middle? That tells me I can't remember. Only when I multiply or divide in the parentheses can I distribute. This means this is... And I say this, I'm putting emphasis here because you will have one like this on your oh. test and on your homework. Now, we ran into this in the last chapter and several of you asked what happens when you have more than two pieces. You can't do more than two at the time, okay? So what you want to do is you want to multiply these two out, get the answer, and then multiply it to the third. So just quickly, 2x times 2x is 4x squared. 4x squared. 2x times negative 1? Minus 2x. Minus 2x. <laughs> I made it hard when I wrote it. 4x squared minus 4x plus 1. Now I've got to do it one more time. You see what I'm saying? Don't come to this one and try to bounce this to everything at one time because it doesn't work like that. Yeah. I've been confused for a long time. So okay. Not about this, but about the, like, the part. So if it's like 2x times 2x, does it mean it's 2x squared? 2x times 2x. So you multiply the numbers in front. So 2 times 2 is 4. four and then you add the exponent. So No, just the x. Not the exponents. It's like 4x. Like what? Like... If you have 2x times 2x, yes. there's an imaginary 1 on the x. Uh, 2 times 2 is 4, and 1 plus 1 is 2. Uh, Distribute this through again. 8x to the third. I'm just going to do this quickly because we've already done several examples, but I hate to leave you hanging without the answer. Minus 8x squared plus 4x plus 2x. Minus 1. 12x squared plus 6x minus 1. Yes or no? Addition, subtraction, multiplication. We good? Okay.